this is Sarah from Losing It For Me 42 with my week 63 update. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy on October 26, 2016. My high weight was 389 and that was in April of 2016. My surgery weight was 324. Last week I came at you guys, I want to say I was like 220, 2.8 maybe, 4 something. Um, and this week I am 221.8. So it equals out to be a four point, some point for just stopping and driving. Um, it equals out to be a 2.4 pound loss for the week. So yeah, I'm down, but I don't count the down. I know part of my part of my very big problem is acknowledging accomplishments. I, I have this problem completely. Um, but it's mostly because I'm 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 seesawing. I'm seesawing all over the low two twenties, and it's frustrating to get down and then to immediately gain. Um, and then I get down and then I gain and then I get down and I gain. So I started my new eating plan this week and it didn't go well. Um, my head's not in the game. I'm not in the place where I need to be to start it. I think it's not a bad idea, but I need to be like seriously committed to carb free, like just to like meat and veggies. I need to be seriously committed to meat and veggies before I start. And I wasn't. I was having the same issue I've had for like the last month, which is all I want to do is eat low carb crap. Um, and I can't seem to get away from that. And I, the crappier I feel, the more I want to eat poorly and make poor decisions and things and it's just been kind of really it's been really a real bad head game so until I can really get into the two teens I feel very frustrated um, with the bouncing up and down on the scale now bouncing up and down the scale is my fault I completely take wholehearted blame for that um, I've noticed, I've always known that I have definitely issues with self-sabotage, but I've noticed a pattern where I get down to a low number and then I, I come up with an excuse whether I feel crappy and that allows me to, you know, I feel crappy and so therefore I need crap, I need to eat crap, I need to eat comfort foods, or I eat or I've gotten low and so therefore like, oh, it's okay, you can have this treat. And, and the thing with me is that it doesn't become, it's not, a, it's not a treat. It becomes like, I eat all of it, all of it. And it's like, you know, I don't have like a couple of bean chips. I have a bag or half a bag of bean chips. Like, I... I have this problem and I'm aware of it and I see it and I, I know it when my when I'm doing bad self-talk and I, I'm aware of it and I'm like, okay, I know this is this is this is what this is and I still can't still cannot get it to like get my shit together. Which means that I don't want it. It really does. Like I'm not a hundred percent committed. Because if I was 100% committed, I could really stick to my, I could stick to my guns. The fact that I'm not sticking to my guns tells me I'm not 100% committed. And I have to be, in order to make like real significant changes, I have to be 100% committed. That's just how I work. Like I'm all or nothing kind of person. So like it's really, really difficult for me to, you know, try, try to make a commitment to a change when I'm not really wholeheartedly behind it. Like I want it intellectually. I want it emotionally. I'm not ready for it. 
So, how do I get emotionally ready for it? I don't know. If you know, please let me know. <laughs> but I feel like it's coming around. I've kind of like, I kind of threw up my hands and was like, fuck it. And it's not like, fuck it, like I'm eating everything under the sun. Okay, yeah, I am eating everything under the sun. Um, it's more like, I've had a real, like in the past couple days, it's been just, <sighs> doesn't matter, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Because nothing I do matters. And I know that's so not true. Um, because the scale reflects that it, it really matters. But it's been a really, like a real, like, I've just been eating a lot of low carb, like, other than soup and crackers, because I'm sick, like, other than the soup and crackers, I haven't been eating anything else that's, like, full on carbs, but I've been eating a lot of, like, low carb stuff, a lot of it, and not eating a lot of meat, and not eating a lot of veggies at all, barely any veggies, and, like, I think I kind of, in some ways, had to work that out of my system, because I'm starting to crave, like, meat, and I'm starting to crave, like, vegetables, and how they make, because this is the thing, I crave how they make me feel, I feel full and satisfied, when I eat meat and veggies. I feel like an empty cavern when I eat carbs. I do not get satisfied. I get full, but I don't get satisfied. And then I sit there and I overeat because I'm not satisfied. And I feel like I'm just this gaping maw of a cavern that's just, I need food. So really... I think in some ways, mentally, I needed this. I needed to basically give in, go hog wild, and miss eating real food. Um, because I kind of need that to remind me to eat real food. And that, if, uh, that I can look at this, you know, I can look at that low carb pita and look at it and go like, yeah make me feel crappy. It's not going to be enjoyable. Um, and I think sometimes you need that. I think sometimes you need a reminder of, like, this isn't as good as you think it is. And at first it was like, oh, this is amazing. I love this. Why did I ever give this up? And then, like, you know, after a couple of days, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want this. I don't, I miss, I miss feeling satisfied and full and, and content and, like, I feel not content when I eat crap. So, it's coming back around, which is good. Um, my current new plan, because I'm just going to keep sh throwing things at the wall until something sticks. Um, my current new plan is, come Monday, because I have my family um, Christmas this weekend. Uh, come Monday, I am going to get on plan, get back to meat and veggies, and I'm going to put away the scale. I'm going to stick to meat and veggies, and I'm going to um, not weigh. I don't know when I will weigh. Um, it might be a week. It might be a month. Um, really what it, what my hope is, is that I will get out of the 220s because I won't see how close I am, and so therefore I will stay on plan because I don't know that I'm, I don't know what my weight, I won't know what my weight is, so I won't know, you know, okay. I won't have that self-sabotage. I won't see the low number and go like crazy because I see the low number. And it's, it sounds, I know, it's, it's completely insane that I literally go like, oh God, there's a low number on the scale. Must gain weight. 
that's literally like how my my messed up brain works. <laughs> um, and you have to also remember, I have been significantly heavy my entire life. This is the smallest I think I've ever been. And I mean like even as a kid, this is the smallest I've ever been. Even as a kid, I was bigger than this. I was a size 16 for as like, I was a size 18 in junior high school. I don't know what I was in, in elementary school, but, like, I was an 18 in junior high school. So, like, if that tells you, I have been big my entire life. So to be this small is scary. To not have that self-identification of the heaviest girl in the room is scary. It messes with my noggin. I want to be this size. I want to be smaller than this size, but it is something I need to really work on. So I think I'm just going to put away the scale for as long as I can. I don't want to set. I don't want to set a time because I don't want. I don't want it to be like, oh, I'm counting down the days. I want it to be for, and I work much better this way. I want to see how long I can go. And a lot of times, I can go a long time. And I think I might be I might be more successful if I go, I want to see how long I can go. Um, and just stick to plan. And, you know, I, I, there are going to be days where I'm off plan and that's fine. But for the most part, I need to be like 90-10 and not 10-90. <laughs> I need to be 90-10 on plan. So that is my kind of like current mindset is I need to work on me and I need to work on the self-sabotage. I need to take away the scale, as scary as it is, to focus and to stop, stop freaking out because the scale goes down. Um, I'm happy the scale goes down, but there is that subconscious part of me that's just a fucking bitch um, that's fucking it all up for, for, for both of us. So I'm going to put her away and I'm just going to focus on, on doing what I'm supposed to do. I did push my nutritionist appointment because there was no way that I was going to show up to that nutritionist appointment having gained instead of lost and I would have gained since the last month I saw her. I was supposed to lose six pounds and I gained. Um, cause last time I saw her, I was in the 221. I was like 221 the day I went to, like, I went to see her. So, yeah, totally would have gained. Um, and I couldn't do that to myself. I could not. I would, I don't, I don't do well. That would have set me off the deep end forever. Um, so I pushed it a month. Um, I was like, I got a month to get my shit together before I see her again, and then we can talk about my problems. Because <laughs> there definitely are my problems. Um, but it'll, it'll, it'll get there. It'll get there. I, I do have faith that I can get it together. Um, it's just... Literally, I was so good most of this week. It was only towards the end of the week. It was only towards when I started to, like, really get down back into the 221 that I was, like, free hog wild. And then it was even worse. It wasn't free hog wild. It got worse when I got sick. Being sick has always been my excuse to eat off plan. And part of it is just that I only have so much in me. And to get up and to go to work and be sick the entire time, like, I don't have it in me to be on plan. I don't. But, I've eaten off plan for the last couple days, and now I feel like crap that I don't want to eat off plan anymore, because I don't like that food. I want my food. So, in some ways, it's, it is coming back around. I'm getting there. It's coming back around. Coming back around. I will get my shit in gear and get off of this yo-yo. This 
tilt a whirl. That's just not helpful. And I know, like, it might not happen until my next period because that's when I lose the majority of my weight, and that just tends to always seems to happen again. Um, now that I guess my hormones are a little bit more regulated, I'm back to that where I'm really only losing significant amounts during my period, but we shall see. I have faith that I can get my ass in gear. I have faith that I can... Excuse me. Uh, go a long time without weighing. And then I can get past the self-sabotage and get my shit in order. Um, that being said, I'm going away again and... I probably am not going to be eating on plan again during that time, mostly because when I'm away, it's very difficult. When you're not, like, I think my forehead has gotten even more wrinkly than more weight I've lost. It's like super wrinkly. Um, <laughs> squirrel. Uh, but it's very difficult when you're staying with others for, for you to, um, to control what you eat. You really have to make do. And I'm not, I'm not someone who's going to be like ultra, like I hear I brought my own food or like you have to serve me this. Like, no, I just make do with whatever is offered. Um, cause it's, to me, it's not the end of the world, but I will, I will, I will figure something out. Okay. guys, I'll check in with you next week and hopefully I've gotten some of my shit together in that time.